Right on. Okay, we're still working on Git, uh, using Git for version control. So today's goal is I want you to get more comfortable using the Git commands and Git bash. Uh, we're going to create a Git ignore filter for Visual Studio projects. We're going to do that before we actually create a Visual Studio project. And that's because a lot of files need to be hidden from version control. We're going to then create a Visual Studio console application. We're going to title it, put it into the folder where we have our clone of the repository. We're going to build that project. We're not going to actually code anything. We're just going to build it. It's going to generate some files. And some of those files we want in version control, some we don't. The git ignore filter will hide the ones we don't want. And then it will also allow us to add, commit, and push all new files that we do want to track. And then we're, once we push it, it'll be on our Bitbucket site. And then I also have a list of standard commands that we can use while we're doing git bash. And that one special command we're going to go over if we need it. But if we don't need it, we won't. Okay. But here we go. There's the list of commands. I'm going to pause this. Okay. In order to do, uh, wow, my voice just started to change. In order to do a git ignore file for Visual Studio 2012, we need a huge file with a list of um, some, some information that will allow git to know what to hide. And for that, we're going to use a text editor. So all we need for today is a browser, a text editor, and git bash. The rest we're going to do, well, in Visual Studio. So what you can see here is I, I'm just going to Google it. I have a hyperlink to this, but I'm just going to Google Git Ignore for Visual Studio 2012. It's going to take me to Stack Exchange or Stack Overflow, excuse me. Stack, I don't know what Stack Exchange is. All right. Uh, and so what we want is we want all of this information here. There's a lot of files, and I can walk you through what each of these are, but basically... Once you get that file, you just copy it and paste it into a text editor. I'm going to use Notepad++, create a new file. I'm going to paste it in. So one of the things that this does, just so you know, is anything that has a star, star is like, that's like a wild card. Something that appears before the star, it just, anything, basically this end crunch could appear anywhere and it would hide anything that had those words in it. Uh, let's go down a little bit lower. Uh, well, let's go up, sorry. Um, this right here, for example, where you see two letters, one's uppercase, one's lowercase, this just means any file with a dot .obj. That O could be capitalized, it could be lowercase, doesn't matter, either one gets ignored. Anything with the dot .user is ignored. Notice the star is the wildcard. It means just any file name that ends with the dot .user, dot .aps, et cetera etc etc so I just copied all of that code from that website pasted it into a text document and then we're gonna save it and this is an important step here and I'm having you do it on notepad plus plus because if you do regular notepad uh, regular notepad wants to create it and save it as dot txt record this okay the next step we're gonna do which is save the file is incredibly important Here's what we don't want to save it as. We don't want to save it as .getignore.txt. It cannot be a text file. It needs to be, the extension is .getignore. So when we save this file, I like to use Notepad++ because it respects all file types. But to be safe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my folder and save it where it says save as type. I'm going to choose all files. It's a very type, top, all types. You want to do this, all types. Huh? Yeah. So at this point, let me be very careful to mention this, guys, and this is an important step here. Not only do you want to save as type, all types, and I'm going to zoom in on this, you want to put this in your repository, the direct repository. Now, is mine six? Okay, so mine is actually my direct repository is in six programming instructions folder. So this is where I need to save it. So I'm looking to see that I see a .get, a readme. That's where I want to put it. And so I'm going to put .get ignore, and I'll zoom in on that so you can see it. So I'm going to get my magnifier to. All right, I'm just going to videotape this like screen capture I got really large just to show you. 
There's your project. Notice there's where the .git is, the readme file. If you can't see the .git, look for the readme. And then down here, I'm highlighting the fact that you're saving it as .git ignore in all types to make sure that you're, there, it's not going to add a .txt at the end. If it does that, it won't work. Okay? It can't be .git ignore .txt. It's just got to be .git ignore. So did we just save it as .git ignore? What's that? So we just save it exactly as .git ignore? Yeah. Okay, before I go any further, I just want to point out, I'm now at my Bitbucket repository for this project, and I realize, I realize now that my it, that the repository I'm pushing everything to is the six programming instructions practice. So I actually put my file in the wrong folder. So all I have to do now is find that file and just move it or copy it and paste it. So I'm going to go into my folder where I have it, Visual C Sharp Projects, and it's in here that I have it. So I want to save it into this folder right here. So I'm going to go back one folder, and somewhere in there it is. I'm going to find it again. I'm just going to resave it, I guess. Save it into the six programming instructions folder. Click Save, All Files. I'm good to go. Okay, just remember it's a dot get ignore file, and you can see on the tab there it's dot get ignore, and it shows me where that's at. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to get git bash open to that folder where my work is. So I need to get the path. We're going to get the path by opening the folder, and then what we're going to do is we're going to copy that whole path. So I want you to find the folder where you're doing your repository work. Find that folder. Notice I can see my .git ignore. If you can't view hidden files, you'll just see a blank document. It'll say it's a text document, but really it's git ignore. You should see your readme, and you should hopefully see another kind of hidden folder or something like that. So either way, make sure you're in the right folder. I'm going to copy my address, go to git bash, and I'm going to change directory. CD space, I want a single quote, and then I'm going to right click, choose edit, and paste. Single quote, hit enter, and as long as it shows me the folder, and notice, you see that parenthesis, master parenthesis, see that master in parentheses? That's a clue that that is indeed under version control. So even if you couldn't see the .git folder, if you see that master in parentheses, you're good. Just make sure that this is indeed the one that you've been pushing to the repository. Now, one of the really important commands for you to do, and if you're lost, you're not sure, what have you done recently, is git status. And this will tell us we have an untracked file. Anything in red is an untracked file. We need to add it and then we can commit it, and then we can push it, okay? And it notice, dot git ignore, nothing else. If yours in red shows dot git ignore, dot txt, you forgot to save as all types, and there's a mistake, and you're going to have to fix that before you can add it and push it. Sound good? All right, we're going to assume that everything's okay, and we're going to add it. And look, they even give us a hit. Git add dot get ignore okay now did we add it or didn't we we don't know for sure we can assume we did but in case we didn't we can do get status again get status is a nice one now notice new file it's in green that means it's tracking it however it's only staged it's on the stage ready to go out and perform its scene or whatever I don't know why I don't know why they call it staged okay but either way it's staged, but it's not committed, so we're going to need to commit it. We're going to do git. By the way, if we want to unstage it, it's get, reset, head, and then file name. But we're not going to do that. Okay. Git. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Commit. Dash M. Why? I don't remember. I'll find out and let you know next time. And then we need a message. Now, when you do a message... They recommend, and I think this is right, they make, recommend giving an action word like adding. But I'll show you where that link is, and we'll go over that in just a moment. Okay, while we're in the middle of writing a commit, I'm going to show you from gittower.com. They have a cheat sheet on Git. 
And the second page of the cheat sheet has a list of great advice on version control. Notice, it says, begin your message with a short summary. 50 characters max, okay? If you're going over 50 characters, maybe you're trying to do too much in a commit. Uh, number two, it should provide detailed answers as to what was the motivation for the change, how does it differ from the previous implementation, and use what's called the imperative present tense to be consistent with generating messages from commands. So use change, not changed, or changes. So I guess that would be add, not adding. Add dot get ignore filter for VS C sharp project. Plural. Okay? And then hit enter. So we're going to pause. If you want to pause here to see the commands we've done, you can do that. Okay, we added the get ignore file. We committed our get ignore file. Now it's time to push it to the repository. And so the next command is git push u origin master. Or is it master origin? I forget. Here's my notes origin master. Oh, I got it right. Now, if everything is good, it should just ask me for my password. This is the SSL player. Ah. Oh, mine did it too. Okay, well, I guess this is going to happen every time I try to push the first time. There's got to be another fix for it, but for now, that's where we want the next. It's git config dash dash global git config global bool add all of which start with the double dash, double dash global, double dash bool, double dash add, HTTP dot SSL verify false. In other words, we don't have to verify through a secure socket layer to do this. This is a result of being on a network computer with a firewall. If you were at home, you probably wouldn't come across this issue unless you had your own firewall you had to go through. Either way, that's what you want to do, and then... We will push one more time. Git push u origin master. This time it should ask for the username. And when you type the username, just remember it's, or the password, excuse me. This time, when you start writing the password, it won't show anything, but just trust you're typing it correctly. And if you do it incorrect, you'll have to do it again. There's my password. Bam. Once you see all that, you're golden, you're good to go, and you can test it in Bitbucket. We can find it. Oh my gosh. And Bitbucket, hit refresh. On the source, I have git ignore right there. For whatever reason, it thought I did it nine minutes ago, but that was when I must have committed it. I go to overview, and I can see I pushed one commit. Add git ignore filter via C sharp projects. I did it.